one thing that comes to your mind after looking at all these pics i guess uh, would be this that is corrosion all of the materials are corroded now in the previous video i told you that what is this corrosion process all about basically it is reverse of extraction of metal now today in this video what i am going to cover would be dry corrosion and this is uh, the different type of corrosion list which i am going to cover in the coming videos so hi i am neha and today i am going to discuss about dry corrosion here the name says that it it is basically dry so this type of corrosion occurs in the atmosphere which is dry that means there has to be absence of moisture now this corrosion is also known as chemical corrosion because there is a direct chemical attack of the metal surface basically on metal surface the gases do attack and the gases has to be free from moisture so some of the examples could be oxygen halogen h2s sulfur dioxide nitrogen etc also if you can see a liquid is present here then it has to be anhydrous that means it should not have moisture so basically uh, this type of corrosion occurs depending on the environment first it could occur in the presence of oxygen gas and that's how it is oxidation corrosion second it could happen in the presence of other gases than oxygen like i have given you the examples here halogen and h2s and all and the third one it could happen in presence of anhydrous liquids or anhydrous liquids you may say where there is no moisture at all but the metal is in a liquid state also the rate and extent of corrosion will depend on the chemical affinity that means how the metal and the gases are affiliated to each other do they have a reactive uh, nature or not temperature if you increase the temperature generally the rate of corrosion get increased and the corrosion product like the product which is formed after corrosion will decide that further corrosion will takes place or not so let us go ahead with first type that is attack by oxygen gas so that's a direct attack of oxygen generally at low temperature or maybe at high temperature but the main thing is sure that there has to be absence of moisture absence that is how it is dry corrosion and since oxygen that is how it is oxidation corrosion and anomaly at high temperatures like almost all metals are oxidized but if you go with uh, the examples i would say alkali metals and alkaline earth metals are the targeted material which are easily oxidized at low temperature and now what does uh, basically the reaction shows is that oxidation will occur and oxidation is nothing but loss of electron so obviously the metal is going to lose electron and it's going to convert into a cation on the other hand since it's a attack of oxygen so there has to be oxygen right this oxygen will take up this electron will get converted to a anion now you have cation and you have anion and that's how the overall reaction is there the cation and anion do react and they form a uh, metal oxide and like that now what happens basically here is if this is a metal basically and if you consider this is the top side or the front surface from where there is ex uh, access to the oxygen gas now what happens is this metal starts corroding and obviously there has to be a oxidation reaction so this is the oxidation reaction metal loses an electron gets converted to cation at the same time there is excess of oxygen gas here right so this oxygen will take up this electron and will get converted to o2 minus now there are two possibilities obviously the first one is inward diffusion of oxide ions these ions which are made they have to go inside right and the ions outward diffusion the ions which are like cations have to move outside so one is inward diffusion and the other other one is outward diffusion and out of these two whichever is fast obviously outward diffusion is fast why because the cations are smaller in size and they have a high speed in comparison to that of anion now they do react and they somehow form metal oxide so here the metal oxide scale as you can see here this is metal oxide scale which is formed and uh, that is what the direct reaction of metal and oxygen now what happens is the nature of this metal oxide will decide that further corrosion will takes place or not further the scale will get intensify or not the entire metal is going to get corroded or not 
right so this particular thing will be decided by the nature of this spin let's see the natures could be of four types like metal which is exposed surface react with oxygen and it forms a stable oxide layer now you imagine if the layer is stable obviously it will not allow the outward diffusion of metal ion or the inward diffusion of oxide ion so the metal oxide will not form further so basically these are tightly adhering uh, film and they act as a protective coating and examples could be aluminium, tin, lead, copper, etc. The third type is unstable. That means once this layer is formed, it is unstable. So the reaction could be backward, right? And it will give you metal back. And that means overall, there is no corrosion at all, right? There is no corrosion at all because the layer which is formed is unstable and it gets converted again to your metal. So entire metal is extracted at the end and generally these type of metals are noble metals. That is why we, we say that they don't corrode. They do but they form unstable layer and that goes back, gives back the metal. The third one is volatile. Volatile the name says that it is volatile so it volatilizes away, it evacuates in the atmosphere. So that means every time a fresh surface is available for attack. Now the surface is available, oxygen may react again. Now you imagine metal oxide layer will be formed. Now this scale again would be volatile so it volatilizes away. Again the metal left is of very less quantity. If you see one more layer of scale is formed, this will also get volatilizes away. So basically, if this kind of corrosion takes place, it is a rapid and continuous corrosion. Rapid and continuous means the entire metal gets corroded. So full corrosion will take place here. Coming to the fourth one which is porous. Now the layer which is formed has a pore in it, right? Pores or you can say a, a hole is there. Now when there is a hole present, obviously the further reaction metal outward diffusion or oxygen oxide ion inward diffusion both are possible since you have a crack or a hole so the ion can go out or the ion can go in so that means metal and oxide ion again can react and they again can form metal oxide so further attack is definitely possible so if you can see further attack is possible and then again one more layer is formed it will also have cracks again one more layer is formed it will also will have crack. So basically here also full corrosion will take place and that's quite dangerous in fact because you're not able even to see that the pores are present on the layer but they do uh, are there and it will allow the excess of oxygen. So if moral basically if you want to see uh, basically corrosion takes place when the film is volatile but normally it hardly happens like one of the example is uh, molybdenum here the entire metal gets corroded but if you go with alkali and alkaline earth metals porous is the answer they generally form porous oxide layers and uh, that's how it fully gets corroded unstable no corrosion at all and stable one time corrosion occurs yeah one time corrosion occurs because the topmost layer gets corroded further it does not allow it to do so so basically you have four types of film which is possible stable unstable volatile and porous coming to how do you decide so one more rule is there on the basis of which you can decide that uh, the layer would be protective or not as per this rule they say is that uh, if the volume of oxide layer i mean the nature of oxide layer is protective protective means non-porous means there is no pores and there will be no corrosion right it will only be there if the volume of oxide is equal to or greater than that of volume of metal. So if the metal forms an oxide and the volume of oxide is greater, that means the layer would be non-porous and protective. So at the end, there will be no corrosion, right? The layer is protective. So it will not allow further corrosion. Why? If the volume of oxide is less than the volume of metal, then the oxide layer would be non-protective and it will have pores in it. That means it would be porous and full corrosion will take place. So examples, just like we say that aluminum don't corrode because that's a protective layer. And alkali and alkaline earth metals generally make oxides and the uh, volume is less. That's how it is non-protective and that's how it undergoes corrosion. So, pilling petworth rule is this. Now, if you want to go in detail, then there is one more ratio which can help you in doing so. What you have to do is to find out basically a metal 
and then the metal oxide which is formed from the metal what you have to do is to take the ratio of their volume so take the ratio of volume of oxide to volume of metal and based on that ratio you can judge that the metal is going to uh, be passivated means the layer would be protective or not protective so there is one more criteria which is pilling bedworth ratio i really don't want to get into the detail right now but if you want me to complete this also mention it in the comments i will explain coming to the second type of corrosion the first one was oxidation corrosion the second one says that the corrosion can occur in the presence of other gases also so it's not only oxygen but other gases also that do create this type of mechanism and the extent of corrosion will obviously depend between the reaction degree of attack depends on the nature of film if the nature of film is protective just like silver chloride so then further corrosion will not take place but if the film is non protective the same rule applies now there are two three examples in the case of non protective the first example is hydrogen embrittlement now here uh, the metal which is iron would be exposed to a gas which is hydrogen sulfide h2s right oxygen is not there fine apart from oxygen so when h2s is in contact with iron what happens is iron uh, gets converted to iron sulfide and then it gives uh, it liberates that atomic hydrogen that atomic hydrogen goes uh further inside because the layer uh, the layer has pores so atomic hydrogen will be there now if it further continues one more hydrogen uh, will get diffused right and then they both will react and they'll form h2 gas so this type of diffusion of h dot is possible here because the layer is uh, porous they have voids now when h dot get diffused it forms h2 now you imagine h2 is a gas obviously so these gases will occupy those pores and because of that that void will develop a pressure because the gas is entrapped in that void and that's how blistering or cracking or brittlement of a metal takes place so iron gets brittle in presence of h2s gas why because it reacts with h2s gas it gets converted to sulfide and hydrogen gas is formed in this process due to the pressure created by the hydrogen gas present in the void the material gets corroded there is loss of ductility coming to the second example decarbonization here what happens if you take a steel right and then uh, hydrogen gas is passed through it so what happens here also this atomic hydrogen reacts with this carbon which is present in the steel and carbon change to methane now again methane is a gas again it will be collected in the voids of the steel it will develop pressure and that will cause cracking so basically the carbon content will get decrease in the steel that's how it is known as decarbonization so with the name you can easily remember you know hydrogen embrittlement means brittle nature of uh, iron in presence of uh, hydrogen gas and how the hydrogen gas is generated due to h2s here decarbonization d means removal removal of carbon from steel that is a problem so if a steel container is there and it has uh, access to hydrogen gas then decarbonization takes place and due to which the material gets cracked and loses its strength that's a corrosion and the third one is liquid metal corrosion here the metal has to be in liquid state as i told you earlier it has to be anhydrous that means no moisture is present now what happens is let's say when you have this pipe and liquid metal is uh, flowing through it so the liquid metal is in contact with your solid metal right now what is to be decided with the solid metal either the solid metal has two options either it get dissolved in the liquid metal right or the liquid metal get penetrated in the solid metal so this type of corrosion is only two uh, phenomena possible either the entire solid metal get dissolved uh, in that metal right uh, or second option is the liquid metal gets penetrated in the solid metal so here you can see the cracks the liquid metal has got penetrated inside the solid metal this type of corrosion is also known as dry corrosion both of these modes cause weakening of the solid metal and obviously is a problematic thing some of the example could be nuclear power production devices and all so basically today what i have discussed is dry or chemical corrosion where we have seen that it could be uh, due to three types if the excess of oxygen is there 
all the gases which are other than oxygen are there or the third one when there is liquid metal i hope you are able to understand a bit of dry corrosion in the coming video i am going to discuss the wet corrosion and so on so if you have uh, understood the content please do hit a like and do subscribe the channel that will give me motivation thank you so much